the International Space Station is dying. The orbital observatory, which has stood as a symbol of space exploration, is nearing its end. And the race is on to find a suitable replacement. As it turns out, SpaceX may have the perfect solution. Let's discuss how SpaceX plans to use the Starship as a space station of the future and what obstacles the company has to overcome to turn this vision into a reality. With the retirement of the ISS seemingly imminent, SpaceX has put forth an ambitious plan to turn the Starship into a space station in order to replace the ISS. The Starship we are familiar with today is a newer version of an idea Elon Musk thought about 10 years ago. Back then, he imagined an interplanetary transit transport system, ITS for short, meant to ferry people from Earth to Mars. The main goal was to create a city that can support itself on the Red Planet. The Starship of today is a simpler and more realistic rocket design compared to the ITS that was introduced in 2016. However, the main goal remains the same, to create a rocket that can take many people on extended trips into deep space. Ensuring a comfortable and livable space during these journeys is a fundamental part of the craft's design. Hence, it makes sense that if a Starship can support a crew during a six to nine months trip to Mars, it could be even more practical as a station in low Earth orbit. The Starship hasn't successfully reached the Kármán line, the conventional boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space yet, but improvements are constantly being made to the spacecraft by SpaceX in order to reach orbit. The spacecraft can serve as a space station in various ways. Its greatest strength is its size. In total, the spacecraft offers around 3,500 cubic feet of space inside. This is slightly bigger than the ISS, which has about 3,300 cubic feet of space. This volume is quite substantial. It's even larger than a typical five-bedroom house. Many mock-ups show the interior of a Starship arranged for a basic setup. Usually, there's a central tunnel with a ladder running up the middle, and there are about five or six levels stacked vertically on top of each other. The design is based on the fact that, for missions to Mars or the Moon, the Starship would need to operate while standing upright on the surface, experiencing some level of gravity for the crew. However, this arrangement could change for a space station. Instead of being constrained by the cylindrical and narrow sections of a vertically positioned starship, an alternative option could be to arrange the layout in a style similar to submarines. This means having decks that stretch lengthwise from the front to the back of the spacecraft. Submarines with a hull diameter of 29 to 36 feet usually feature three decks, and a similar concept could be applied to a starship space station. Moreover, thanks to the design of the craft, the starship can keep its heat shields intact and come back to Earth periodically for updates. These trips allow for the installation of new tools and essential upkeep. This strategy is more straightforward compared to having astronauts handle these duties. And it also saves money by reducing the hours astronauts work and the expenses tied to sending them on these missions. The flexibility of Starship also allows for potential future expansions of the space station. The core vessel for the station would be a repurposed Starship acquired from the Star Factory, where these spacecraft are manufactured quickly. Launching multiple Starships is a more practical practical and economical approach than converting a single one into a habitation area. Elon Musk mentioned that the cost of each starship will decrease to around $20 million each, which is incredibly affordable for space stations. When considering the ISS, which has been in orbit for over 20 years, the estimated total operational cost has exceeded $150 billion U.S. dollars. This high operational cost is one of the main reasons NASA has sought the help of several private companies to come up with an alternative for the ISS. They've launched the Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2, CCSC2 for short program, and joined hands with companies such as SpaceX, Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, Think Orbital, Vast Space, and Special Aerospace Services. The main purpose of the CCSC2 program is to offer strategic assistance to commercial space endeavors without putting too much strain on government funds. NASA intends to offer valuable guidance and resources to these companies, helping them improve essential abilities needed to build a strong economy Economy in low Earth orbit. It's important to mention that each participating company in the program will fund its own participation. As a component of the initiative, each of the companies involved submitted proposals. Among them, SpaceX presented their ideas for a Starship space station. As promising as the idea sounds, SpaceX still has several complications to address before the Starship can be considered a clear favorite to replace the ISS. The main challenge 
is the size. While the inside of the Starship is roomy, a significant concern is that about two-thirds of the entire structure can't be used effectively. The space is occupied by the engines, plumbing system, and propellant tanks. It's more than half the ship's total area. The issue stems from the fact that the Starship must first function as a rocket before becoming a space station. The company might need to come up with an engineering answer to convert the lower half into usable space. However, this would require careful planning. Right beneath the cargo fairing is a methane tank, covered by a stainless steel dome that's integrated into the ship's structure. Removing this dome would be necessary to access that space, but it's a complex task. Another significant problem with the Starship station design is the absence of input-output devices. Unlike the ISS, which features numerous ports, attachments, docking points, airlocks, robotic arms, solar panels, and more, the outer surface of a Starship is well known for its sleek and polished appearance. It might not possess the same level of functionality as a purpose-built space station module. Although there are plans for a docking port in the nose cone of the Starship, it's uncertain whether it can accommodate additional access points and attachments on its body. It's important to consider that, given its primary role as a rocket, the exterior of the Starship must maintain aerodynamic stability and robustness to withstand supersonic speeds while ascending through the atmosphere. Due to its massive size, the ship has to withstand substantial forces. In addition to addressing these concerns, space SpaceX must also contend with proposals from other companies in the initiative. A notable project currently in progress is The Loop, a versatile orbital module introduced by Airbus Industries. This orbiting lab includes science labs, living spaces, and a fascinating element, a special centrifuge that can create artificial gravity. This centrifuge will spin to counteract the harmful impacts of weightlessness on the crew's bodies, providing a more comfortable and health-friendly environment in space. NASA has also partnered with Think Orbital for two major endeavors, Think Platforms and Contessa, construction technologies for space applications. Think Platforms aims to create self-assembling big orbital platforms that can be sent into space in one go. These platforms have various uses in low Earth orbit, supporting activities like research, manufacturing, and astronaut missions in space. In contrast, Contessa concentrates on advanced technologies like welding, cutting, inspection, and additive manufacturing, which are essential for large-scale construction projects projects in space. Another company working alongside NASA is VAST, which is focusing on enhancing technologies and procedures essential for microgravity and artificial gravity stations. Their endeavor involves creating Haven 1, a commercial space where crew members can experience microgravity, conduct research, and engage in in-space manufacturing. We have a video dedicated to VAST and their upcoming Haven 1 space station on our channel. Feel free to give it a watch and get updated on all the news regarding this exciting space station. Moreover, VAST's initial crewed mission to this platform, called VAST-1, is part of this partnership between SpaceX and VAST. As per the Space Act agreement, there are also intentions to build more extensive space station modules to the Haven 1 space station in the future, including docking modules specifically for the Starship rocket. Looking at the grander scope, the Space Development Corporation has an ambitious vision called the Voyager Station. This remarkable concept revolves around constructing an enormous rotating space hotel, comprising numerous modules that, when pieced together, shape a vast rotating ring. The Voyager station is set to feature luxurious lodgings that can accommodate as many as 440 individuals. It remains to be seen if the Starship can beat the competition and be chosen as the successor to the ISS. The spacecraft has several obstacles to overcome first as it edges closer to its second test flight. Equipped with an upgraded booster and launch facilities, SpaceX hopes that the Starship will finally reach orbit this time around. What do you think? Could Starship be a capable replacement? for the ISS? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos as we delve into the great unknown.